Welcome to Kenyon's District Medication Training. This presentation was developed by the district nurses to allow you to become certified in medication administration. This annual training was designed to give you an overview of Kenyon's district medication policy and to increase your understanding of how to safely administer medications in the school setting. This training must be viewed in its entirety and the quiz must be taken in order for you to complete the certification. Federal law requires schools to provide health-related services to students, including medication administration. Medications that schools are asked to manage may include controlled substances, emergency and behavioral medications, as well as interventions for chronic illnesses such as diabetes and asthma. Utah state law also directs schools on medication administration. This law requires both public and private schools to provide for the safe administration of medication to students while under the care of the school. Utah state law also provides immunity from civil or criminal liability as long as school personnel are following licensed health care providers' orders and following Canyon School District policy. Canyon's district medication policy provides direction for school personnel in the safe administration of medication to students. The medication policy can be found in a later module in this training. It is highly recommended that every staff member responsible for administering medication in the school be familiar with this policy. All school staff who will be administering medications should be certified by the district nurse. Only a Kenyans district nurse may certify and delegate medication administration to staff. This certification must be renewed annually. Administrative assistants, paraeducators, teachers, and coaches can all be certified to administer medication. Any staff member who may be asked to administer medication should complete this training before handling any medication. Do not allow parents to give you medication without the proper paperwork. School personnel may administer prescription or over-the-counter medication to students only when the medication has been prescribed by the student's licensed health care provider. In order to administer the medication, the student must have a medication authorization form completed and signed by both the health care provider and the parent. A new written medication authorization is required with each new school year as new medication is prescribed or with any change in medication. The school may administer medication for the first 10 school days of the new school year if there was an order for the exact same medication and the exact same dosage from the previous year. This is the official Canyon School District Request for Medication Administration form. It must include the medication, the dosage, and the time. It must be signed by both the health care provider and parent. A copy must be forwarded to your district nurse. Do not accept multiple medication orders on one form. If a student has more than one medication, there should be a form for each medication. If a parent has given the school responsibility for administering medication, the school must make sure the student receives the medication as prescribed by the ordering health care provider. If there is a problem with the student coming to the office, you must notify the parent. Asthma inhalers, EpiPens, and diabetes supplies are considered emergency medications and can be carried by the student as long as they get the proper paperwork submitted. Do not ever take these items from the students. Instead, work with the parents to get the medication forms on file. Do not ever take an asthma inhaler, an EpiPen, or diabetes testing supplies away from a student or prevent the use of them. Work with parents to obtain the proper paperwork for students in elementary schools. Medications must be stored in a locked area. This is usually in the office or health room. EpiPens and Narcan kits must be easily accessible in an emergency. They should be secured but not locked during the school day. At the end of the day, the EpiPens and Narcan kits should be locked up. In certain situations, such as special needs programs, student medication can be kept in a locked cabinet or locked drawer in the special needs program area. Administration of medication is recorded on the student medication record. There should be a student medication record 
for each medication. If the student has two medications at school, then the student would have two student medication records. This form needs to be completed by school personnel and signed by the parent or responsible adult when the medication is delivered to the school. This is the student medication record. It is very important to fill out this form accurately and completely. Document that you administered the medication at the time you administered the medication. If you forget to document administration of medication at the time you give the medication, it could accidentally be readministered by another staff person. The top line must be filled out completely with the student's name, grade, teacher, medication dosage, and the time it is due to be given every day. This should match the medication authorization form completed by the doctor. Then every day the medication is administered, you must initial and give the exact time the medication was administered. If a medication that is given daily was not given, it must be explained. Provide a code on why the medication was not administered. All acceptable codes are shown on the bottom of the form. On the back of the form, the top two lines must also be filled out. Be sure to count the medication with the parent and have them co-sign they are delivering the medication. Inhalers and EpiPens can be recorded as one and co-signed. The next section is used for documentation of lost or unusable medications, medication errors, or communications with parents. We'll discuss more about this later in the presentation. In the last section, record your initials with your signature. Anyone administering medication must sign and initial this section. When documenting, be factual and don't include your opinions. Remember, the rule of thumb is if it's not documented, it's not done. This is your proof that you did do it. There are a few differences between elementary and secondary schools. Students in middle and high school may possess and self-administer over-the-counter medication or prescription medications as long as they do not exceed a 12-hour dosage or the medication is only dispensed in multi-dose containers. This does not apply to narcotic pain medication. All narcotics require a completed medication authorization form and they must be stored according to district policy and administered by school staff. Another difference is the ability of secondary schools to administer acetaminophen or ibuprofen. School personnel in secondary schools may administer acetaminophen or ibuprofen to students in accordance with Kenyan School District policy. These medications may be administered for such complaints as occasional headaches or muscle aches. They should not be administered for fever, abdominal or chest pain, any severe pain or injury, or any recurring health complaints. Your assigned district nurse should be notified if a student is requesting medication several times per week. School personnel must obtain verbal phone consent from the parent prior to administration each time the medication is administered. School personnel must document administration of medication on the acetaminophen and ibuprofen administration record. Stock medications are medications available to treat anyone. Utah law allows trained school personnel to administer certain medications in an emergency. All of our schools are stocked with EpiPens and Narcan. EpiPens are used to treat a life-threatening allergic reaction and Narcan is used to reverse an opioid overdose emergency. These medications can be administered to anyone in an emergency, including students, staff, or a community member. State and federal laws impose restrictions on handling student health records. Medication administration records are considered confidential information. Generally, health care information contained in school records cannot be disclosed to anyone without the consent of a parent or a student who is 18 years of age or older. It is imperative that medication is administered properly. Remember these six rights when administering medication to students. You must have the right student, the right medication, the right dosage, right time, right route, and provide the right completed documentation. There are also a few medication don'ts that are very important to remember. 
Don't give students someone else's medication. Don't skip a dose. Don't crush a pill unless ordered to do so by a health care provider. Don't break a pill. If a half pill is ordered, a parent should bring you a pill that is already cut in half. Don't change the dose or the timing of the dose. And don't give medication that is not brought in in the original container. Always wash your hands before administering medication to students. Hand washing is the single most important practice to prevent transmission of infectious organisms. Always take time to properly dispense the medication to avoid a medication error. Only prepare medication for one student at a time. Identify student by asking the student to state his or her name. Select the correct medication. Compare the label of the medication with the student medication record. Pour the pill into the cap of the medication bottle and then deposit the medication into the student's hand. Be careful not to touch the medication. Stay with the student until you are sure the medication has been swallowed. Document the medication administration on the student medication record with the time given and your initials. Document immediately as you give the medication. You may get busy and forget later. To administer liquid medications, follow all the same steps as before, but remember to pour the medication with the label facing away from you. This will prevent spills onto the medication bottle, which may ruin the label. Pour the medication at eye level into the dispensing cup so that the student receives the proper amount of medication. Have the student swallow the medication in front of you and then remember to complete your documentation immediately. Proper asthma inhaler usage is key to delivering the medication to the lungs. This video will show you how to have the student use their inhaler. Most emergency asthma inhalers are prescribed as one to two puffs every four to six hours. If students are requesting medication more often than this, contact parents. Inhaled medications are essential for preventing and treating asthma attacks, but the medicine is only effective when you use your inhaler correctly. Without proper use, your inhaler may not deliver enough medication to your lungs to control your symptoms. To properly use your inhaler, follow these simple steps. First, take off the cap of your inhaler and remove any lint or objects in the opening. Shake your inhaler for two to five seconds. Remember, if it has not been used for more than 48 hours, you must prime your inhaler. To prime your inhaler, depress the canister once. This ensures the next dose will deliver the correct amount of medication. Next, sit up straight or stand up. Breathe out all the way. Tilt your inhaler slightly and put it into your mouth with your lips sealed around the mouthpiece. As you begin to slowly breathe in, depress the canister. Remember, in order to deliver the medication into your lungs, it is important to start breathing in before depressing the canister. Continue to slowly breathe in over three to five seconds until your lungs are full. Hold your breath for 10 seconds, or as long as you can. If you need to take a second puff of your inhaler, wait one full minute between puffs. You should rinse your mouth out with water after using your controller or inhaled steroid inhaler. Be sure to spit out the water after you're done rinsing your mouth. Recap the inhaler for storage. And that's how you properly use an inhaler to treat or prevent asthma attacks. Your doctor can work with you to make sure your medication is working, and your healthcare provider is the best source of information for any questions and concerns related to your condition. For additional help, information, and resources, visit www.health.utah.gov asthma. Anaphylaxis describes the severe, life-threatening allergic reactions some students can have to certain substances such as food, bee stings, chemicals, or medications. Epinephrine is the treatment of choice for an allergic reaction. There are several different epinephrine auto-injectors on the market, such as EpiPens and AviQs. They all work much the same, and they have instructions printed on the side. I'm 
Dr. Ruchi Gupta, and today I'll be talking about anaphylaxis and how to respond if it happens in your school. When it comes to managing severe allergies and anaphylaxis, it's critical that you have the tools to know it, see it, and treat it. First, it's important to know the basics about anaphylaxis, what it is, and who's at risk. Anaphylaxis is a medical term describing a serious, life-threatening allergic reaction that can happen within minutes, often without warning. It happens when the immune system mistakenly overreacts to what we call an allergic trigger. Common allergic triggers include food, stinging or biting insects, latex, medicines, or exercise. Avoiding known allergic triggers is the first step to preventing anaphylaxis from happening. But accidents happen, and sometimes people can develop severe allergies to something they've been in contact with before with no problems. That brings us to our second step. You've got to be able to recognize anaphylaxis when it occurs. Signs and symptoms can vary from person to person, and students may describe what they're experiencing differently than an adult would. Common parts of the body affected by anaphylaxis include the skin. Visible symptoms like rashes and hives are common, but aren't always present. Listen for verbal cues like, my skin feels prickly, or my arm feels strange. The airways. Listen carefully for any coughing or wheezing. A child might say something like, my chest hurts, or it's hard to breathe. Digestive system. The person may complain about an upset stomach or nausea or may begin to vomit. Cardiovascular system, chest pain, a weak pulse, and fainting can all be signs of a cardiovascular problem. Central nervous system, dizziness, headaches, and confusion. For a child you suspect is experiencing anaphylaxis, this could be something as simple as, I feel funny. Although there is no absolute rule, doctors generally identify anaphylaxis by one of the following. If the person has respiratory or cardiovascular symptoms, such as experiencing trouble breathing or chest pains, or if the person has symptoms involving two or more body systems, such as a skin rash coupled with nausea, or perhaps they develop hives and dizziness. When tragedies from life-threatening allergies occur, it's often because people had trouble recognizing anaphylaxis from a less severe allergic reaction. That's why it's critical to know the symptoms and the third step, how to treat anaphylaxis if it happens. A person experiencing anaphylaxis should be treated right away with an epinephrine autoinjector, such as an EpiPen autoinjector, and seek immediate emergency medical care after use. EpiPen Epinephrine Injection USP 0.3 mg and EpiPen Junior Epinephrine Injection USP 0.15 mg auto injectors are for the emergency treatment of life-threatening allergic reactions, anaphylaxis, caused by allergens, exercise, or unknown triggers, and for people who are at increased risk for these reactions. EpiPen and EpiPen Junior are intended for immediate administration as emergency supportive therapy only. Seek immediate emergency medical help right away. Seeking immediate emergency medical care is important because healthcare professionals must continue to monitor and evaluate the allergic reaction. In some cases, reactions can look like they've resolved or gone away, but the person can begin experiencing symptoms again. National Food Allergy Guidelines recommend that those at risk for anaphylaxis have access to two epinephrine autoinjectors at all times. Having this access is important because up to 20% of people experiencing anaphylaxis require more than one dose of epinephrine before symptoms subside. If more than two sequential doses of epinephrine are needed, it should only be given under direct medical supervision. Please know that antihistamines or corticosteroids do not treat life-threatening symptoms of anaphylaxis. life-threatening allergic reaction, anaphylaxis, is unpredictable. It could be mild one minute, then suddenly... It's scary. Like, you can't even breathe scary. Or your skin gets all itchy and breaks out into hive scary. Or your throat starts to tickle and close scary. 
It's different for everybody. Every reaction is different. A mild reaction one time can be life-threatening the next. So it's important to know your body and know when it starts to feel funny. It could be the warning signs of anaphylaxis. So it's also important to know how to use one of these. An EpiPen auto-injector. EpiPen and EpiPen Junior are for the emergency treatment of life-threatening allergic reactions. And for people who are at an increased risk for these reactions. EpiPen and EpiPen Junior should only be used to help someone during an emergency. Ready to show them how it's done? Yeah! EpiPen Junior, the one with the green label, is for kids. Like me! An EpiPen with the yellow label? For bigger people. Like me. Whether you need to use EpiPen on yourself or give it to someone else, you can just follow these simple steps. So first things first. You take it out of the tube. Just flip open the yellow cap. Or the green cap. Slide it out. And hold it like this. Blue to the sky. Orange to the thigh. Then you take off the blue cap. Blue safety release. Never put your hands near the orange tip, because that's where the needle comes out. The needle is designed to go through clothing, including jeans, because it must be injected into the outer thigh for quick absorption. If you're helping a young child, like me, hold the leg firmly in place. Once it is, you just do this. Boom. It clicks, so you know it worked. Then you hold it there for three seconds. Then, remove EpiPen. You'll still see some liquid in there, but don't worry, your EpiPen Junior Auto Injector gave you the right dose, and it has a special feature, the Never See Needle. Yeah, so the needle's totally covered up, so you should never see the needle. Then rub the spot for 10 seconds while you or someone else gets emergency medical help right away. Call us an ambulance. <laughs> or have someone take you to the emergency room. Just make sure to do it immediately. And you should always carry two EpiPen auto injectors wherever you go. They even come clipped together because some people might need the second dose. Take your expired or used EpiPen auto injectors to your doctor's office and ask for a refill. Remember, epinephrine is the only first line treatment for anaphylaxis, not antihistamines. So just trust yourself and do it. Don't hesitate especially if you know the symptoms of a life-threatening allergic reaction. And I've practiced with the gray trainer that comes in the box. Because this is what's important to people like me. And me! Call 911 after administering epinephrine. If a student is exhibiting signs or symptoms of an anaphylactic reaction and they do not have an auto-injector at school, use the stock EpiPen and call 911. Do not delay using the auto-injector as every second counts. Remember to check expiration dates regularly and have parents replace epinephrine auto-injectors as soon as they expire. We must accept these Utah State Health Department forms. Remember to still forward a copy of these forms to your district nurse. Medication errors can happen easily in a busy office. No one should be ashamed to admit they are wrong, which is but saying, in other words, that they are wiser today than they were yesterday. If we fail to accurately document events after an error, we can then be held liable. A medication error occurs when any part of the process is done incorrectly. It can include when a medication is given to the wrong student or the wrong medication is administered. The medication is given at the wrong time or the wrong route is used. It can also occur if you give the incorrect dose of medication. Failure to document medication administration properly is also a medication error. If a medication error occurs, observe the student. Do not leave them alone. Identify the incorrect dose or type of medication taken by the student. Office staff should immediately notify the principal, the parent, and your district nurse. If they cannot be reached, notify prescribing physician and or poison control. Document the student's response to the medication and the action taken. Unusable medication should be reported to the parent and documented on the student medication record. An example of this would be when a student spits out a medication or drops the medication on the floor and then refuses to take it. Medication that is lost, unusable, or unaccounted for needs to be reported to the district nurse and documented on the student medication record. If medication turns up lost or stolen, it can be a serious issue and requires immediate reporting to the parent, the district nurse, and the principal. Medication audits are completed annually by your district nurse. They are intended to be educational and not punitive. 
any school that is not in compliance on the initial audit will be audited a second time. District nurses are required to report to the Director of Responsive Services those schools that remain out of compliance after the second audit. Practice medication audit worksheets can be found in a later module in this Canvas course. Proper medication disposal must be done to avoid potential liability. Medication must be picked up by a responsible adult within two weeks of the last dose administered or within two weeks of the last day of school. If medication remains at the school after two weeks, notify your district nurse of medication needing disposal. A district nurse will arrange for medication pickup. Disposition of the medication should be noted on the student medication record. 